today's lesson. I'm Mrs. Fight. Today we will investigate the question, how can we slow changes to the land of Montauk Point to protect the Montauk Point Lighthouse? Are you ready? Grab your pencil and your science journal and let's get started. Imagine you are riding on a ship near New York. You watch the waves crash against the shoreline near the Montauk Point Lighthouse. If the waves wash the sand away, what might happen to the lighthouse? It might fall into the water. How could we save the lighthouse? We can use the engineering design process. Do you remember the stages? Which stage comes first? Call it out. First, we ask questions to figure out our problem. In the case of the Montauk Point Lighthouse, we identified the problem that if waves wash away the land around the Montauk Point Lighthouse, it will fall into the water. We decided that the solution to the problem is that we will create a shoreline protection system to slow or prevent water from washing the land away. And we will know the solution works if the lighthouse stays standing. Time to move on to the next stage of the engineering design process. Do you know what stage that is? Call it out. It's the imagine stage. In this stage, engineers conduct research, examine possible materials, and brainstorm solutions. We will imagine different solutions and then select materials that work together to create our shoreline protection system. This information will help us investigate the question, how can we slow changes to the land of Montauk Point to protect the Montauk Point Lighthouse? Are you ready to get started? Let's go. In our last lesson, we looked at a bulkhead shoreline protection system. Do you remember what it looked like? Shout out the parts of the system. I remember the system blocks the water with a wooden fence and wooden posts and plants hold the land in place. Do you agree? It's a little hard to remember though. Engineers draw sketches and diagrams during the imagine stage. Let's look at a diagram of this bulkhead shoreline protection system. What does this diagram show? I see the wooden fence and wooden posts. I also see land behind the fence and plants on top of the land. First, we describe the system from memory. Then, we describe the system by looking at a diagram. Which way was easier? Shout out your answer. I think the diagram is easier. Do you agree? A diagram allows us to see what is behind the wooden posts, and we can see how it is holding back the land. Engineers draw sketches of their ideas and create diagrams like this one. Diagrams help people understand what solutions could look like and what parts the solutions could have. Do you think we can use a diagram to help us design our shoreline protection system? I think so. But before we draw a design, we need to decide which materials we will include. Here are some materials I gather to use for our model. Twigs, toothpicks, Chanel stems, moss, rocks, and cheesecloth. Look around your house. Do you have different materials that you could use? If so, you can include those in your design as well. Hmm, now that we have materials, let's look again at the shoreline protection systems we saw in our last lesson. How could we use our materials to represent the shoreline protection systems? Do you notice something in common with all the systems? Do you notice that they all have materials that block the water as well as materials to keep the land in place? Let's think about materials that block water, such as the wooden posts and the wooden fence. Point to a material you might use to block the water. Well, the twigs, toothpicks, and Chanel stems are straight like the wooden posts, 
and the wooden fence in the shoreline protection system. Could they help block the water? How could we use the twigs, toothpicks, or Chanel stems to help block the water? Hmm, well, we have toothpicks that are made of wood and they are thin with sharp ends. The twigs are a little thicker and not as straight. The Chanel stems are fuzzy and bend easily. Which materials might you use? I wonder, will each of these materials work the same way? Do you think some materials are stronger than other materials? Which materials could help hold the land in place, like the plants in the shoreline protection system? Look at the moss, the rocks, and the cheesecloth. How could you use these materials in your shoreline protection system model? Moss is green and soft. It also bends easily. Could the moss do a good job of holding the land in place? The rocks are the heaviest material. How could we use the rocks? Hmm, what about the cheesecloth? Cheesecloth is a fabric with a lot of tiny holes in it. Cheesecloth is easy to pick up. It is not heavy. Do you think we can use cheesecloth by itself? Or maybe we need to use cheesecloth with another material. Should we use more than one material in our model? I wonder if using more than one material can make the shoreline protection system stronger. Hmm, what materials could we put together? Deciding which materials to use is an important part of the plan stage of the engineering design process. Engineers make diagrams during this stage that they can use to create their solution in the create stage. We can draw a diagram of our ideas too. What should our diagram show? I think our diagram should show which materials we want to use, as well as how those materials will work together as a system. We should also label all the materials in our diagram, as well as the lighthouse and the land. Imagine we are riding on that ship past Montauk Point again. Imagine this time your shoreline protection system is in place to keep the land from washing away. What does the shoreline protection system that you designed look like? Let's review your tasks for today. First, draw and label your design. Next, describe your design. Thanks for joining me on today's journey as we investigated ways we can slow changes to the land of Montauk Point to protect the Montauk Point Lighthouse. Your task for today is to complete lessons 15 through 17 Science Journal. I'll see you next.